Hi folks, it's Switchback. In this video today, I'm gonna to be discussing geotagging versus gatekeeping. So what exactly is geotagging? It's basically like checking in somewhere out in the wilderness where you are. If you're taking pictures and you tag the location and you're real specific, especially that's considered geotagging. As users of the outdoors, we have a responsibility to protect these spaces that we love so much. It's also important that these outdoor spaces are available to everyone who wants access. COVID has really amplified the impact to these outdoor spaces with people who couldn't go and do the things that they love to do indoors because of all of the shutdowns. And a lot of people don't realize that there's an etiquette to it. They have no familiarity with leave no trace. Right now it is spring in 2022 and things are kind of resuming normal. I'm in California, so we're all on different paces, but it'll be interesting to see what the usage looks like this summer. Funding has always been an issue and most spaces just don't have the infrastructure to handle these mass crowds. So it's up to us to help people learn how to use outdoor spaces spaces responsibly and safely without talking down to people. Very important. But this is one of the missions of this channel is I really want people to have access to the outdoors, but also to know how to respect those outdoors to keep them safe for the next generations. And if that's something that's important to you, subscribe below and give this video a like. Geotagging versus gatekeeping is an ongoing argument. And I don't know, in my opinion, that there is one right answer to this. There are arguments for geotagging, such as it's fun to share what we've experienced and to give other people that opportunity to go and share those too. Like, look at these beautiful lupins. You should smell how sweet it is out here. Geotagging is a fun way to learn of new places to go. It's important to invite people to outdoor spaces and people who fall in love with the outdoors are more likely to be behind conservation efforts and to vote in ways that help protect the outdoors. There are several arguments against geotagging. Generally, there's more impact. We see more trash. Many folks simply don't know how to properly care for our outdoor spaces. Again, many places don't have the funding or the infrastructure to handle the increased foot traffic. There's increased vandalism, whether intentional or not. People even get injured or killed trying to get the perfect Instagram photo. And you can see this post from Yellowstone <laughs> urging people to be really careful with this. Our vegetation gets trampled. You'll see pictures on Instagram of someone laying in a field just like this one and crushing a bunch of these beautiful lupins. We see more illegal trails and it starts to get harder and harder to suss out which ones are the legal trails and which ones are illegal. And then people get lost, which leads to more search and rescue efforts. There's erosion to existing trails as people widen them, trying to avoid mud puddles, cutting switchbacks, generally more illegal behaviors out on the trails. Overuse leads to permits and lotteries, more fences, closing spaces, and losing easements. Easements are um, places where a trail might cross private property, but there's already an agreement in place that people can access that particular part of the trail as long as they're staying on the trail. And of course, not damaging it. There's more generally poor etiquette on the trails from people who simply don't know better. It makes it hard to find parking in popular locations. People even start parking on the street illegally and then they block roads. And people may not know to check for current conditions, to check for closures and any safety notifications. The opposite of geotagging is gonna be gatekeeping. A few arguments for it are we get to enjoy these beautiful outdoor spaces with a little more solitude. You can take pictures without people in them. Overall, these spaces stay in better shape. They're more likely to be used by people who are familiar with Leave No Trace, who know trail etiquette. It keeps beginners out of spaces that might be in over their heads. And people are capable of doing their own research if they want to, but may not know how. Why wouldn't we want to gatekeep? Well, it can feel exclusive and kind of like you're better than, I mean, you're showing things on social media, but refusing to say where those were taken. It contributes to divisiveness and privilege, and it contributes to people feeling policed, which is something that's also an issue with the Leave No Trace principles. Frankly, there are dangers to people who ignore the rules or don't know them, don't know better how to behave out in the wilderness. People can be cited for violations of rules and laws that they may not even understand or know about. 
people getting in over their heads are more likely to get lost, dehydrated, and just plain underestimate the trail. They're more likely to get injured not knowing how to handle certain conditions and terrain and they may not have the right gear. For example, when Mountain Goat and I did the mist trail earlier this winter, there were a lot of people out there that didn't even have micro spikes on and the whole trail was iced over and it's quite steep. And so a lot of people were really struggling, especially on the way down. We saw a lot of falls. These folks are more likely to need emergency services, search and rescue, and they're less likely to have the supplies with them to get them through an emergency or to wait out until search and rescue gets to them. They also may not have the gear to call for help, especially if they're out of cell reception. And frankly, they can put other people at risk. For example, when Mountain Goat and I went to do Angel's Landing, there were some people on those chains I was really worried about kicking us off and there was someone who went running above everybody in skater shoes and on that sandstone i was just waiting for him to slip and push you know six of us off of the chains down you know a thousand feet in any case what is our responsibility we have a responsibility to get the word out about outdoor education we have a responsibility to get the word out about how to take care of these outdoor spaces some locations explicitly ask people to report violations. We can make ourselves available to people who want to go and experience these beautiful outdoor spaces. We can be the example, whether we're with people or we're out solo, and we can further educate ourselves. I know I have learned so much since I started this channel. It's one of the gifts that I did not anticipate, but I'm loving. Speaking of educating ourselves, you know, I've learned a lot over the years and I grew up burying toilet paper, for example, and the idea of packing it out absolutely horrified me. And thankfully, it's really not a big deal, but it's something that I didn't know any better about when I was younger. But we've also learned a lot more about the outdoors. If you're getting any value out of this, be sure to like it down below and hit subscribe. So what can we do? Well, we can join groups, host groups, and teach people how to care for our outdoors, discuss logistics ahead of time, like having a toilet kit, carrying a trash bag, making sure that you have enough water and other safety precautions. You can join cleanup efforts. So you can pick up trash that you see along the trail, which is something that I do a lot. And you can also join organized efforts. You can volunteer for trail maintenance organizations. This is something that I've done. I did it years and years ago with my son. It's a lot of fun. I should do it again soon. You can join conservation organizations and memberships and you can also buy a park pass so it's a regional park a state park and you know national parks passes all of those contribute financially to the conservation of these spaces and if you do want a geotag you can do a larger space so maybe don't tag an exact lake or an exact spot but you can do the entire park like if in your if you're somewhere in Yosemite, you can do the entire park versus some isolated lake that not a lot of people know about. Or you can just say you're in California or you're in the Sierra. Basically some kind of entity that's larger than that exact space. I would love to know your thoughts on this down in the comments below. And again, speaking of educating ourselves and learning a lot, again, I learned so much when I made my Leave No Trace series. And if you're interested in watching that, I've got it available right up here. Thank you so much for watching and I will look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.